church. His ministry includes singing, preaching, and teaching. His life's motto is, if I can help somebody as I pass by, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, then my living won't be in vain. Please welcome to the show, none other, incomparable Pastor Sean Jones. Welcome, Pastor Jones. Thank you for coming. I'm so excited. Can you tell? I'm excited. Okay, I'm okay, excited. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I want to start. Okay, first of all, I want to know. Okay, I'm going to ask you, Sabrina Summary. Who bestowed upon you your values, your morals, and your virtues? In other words, where your home training came from? Uh, my mother. Your mother. My mother. I was raised by a single parent. Uh, we moved to Alabama. We lived in Columbus, Ohio. We moved to Alabama when I was about six. 
and uh, my mother raised me. Uh, Your mother. Myself. That's right. She did an awesome job. Thank you. We, we all thank her. We all celebrate her. How deep are your musical roots? Did your mother sing? Oh God, my mother sings, my aunt sings, my uncle sings, my grandfather. My grandfather died at 103, and oh he was still playing his guitar. Oh. Amazing. Yeah. So how did that, how, when did you start, start singing? I think I did my first song. I was about eight years old. It was watch night service at our church. And I could sing at home. My mother knew it. And so she said to me, you're going to sing at church. Okay. And I cried. <laughs> my first song was uh, the Canton Spirituals on my way home. It was on watch night. Uh, and my mother stood in front of me. I stood behind her crying. And she hid me from the people and I sung. And when I saw the reaction of the crowd, I looked around my mom. Yes. <laughs> and I saw yes. it. And uh, once I saw that I could actually sing. Yes. And the people responded. Yes. I was gone. You're well me. on your way. Yes, ma'am. So when did it when did it change from again I'm asking when did it change from maybe a talent show type novelty to I know I have something? When were you really aware and really sure that I've got something a little bit more than just singing? I think around 12, uh -huh. Why? 12, um, my godfather, who was uh, Reverend Bobby Johanna, he was uh, he had a group called the Five Gospel Singers, mm -hmm. and later we changed the name to the Alabama Spirituals, but he was the bass guitar for our church, and he knew I could sing in the choir, and so he told my mother, I got a group, and uh, I think he would be good in, and said, I I'll be responsible for him, and at 12 years old, he took me out of the choir, and onto the road with him. At 12? At 12. Was that your first time singing professionally? First time. First what time. did you learn from that experience? Everything. Everything that I know now, I learned from Bobby Johanna, Alabama Spirituals. I was his bass guitar player. I'll tell you how that happened. We were in Fayetteville doing a concert, and um, I had never played the bass. Joe would get happy. He was a bass player and the lead singer. He would get uh -huh. happy, and he would get happy, and he would take the bass off. We were in Fayetteville one night, and he got happy and took the bass off and okay. gave it to me. And right on the spot, I just found the key where he was at and just held the note. And uh, from that, I said, man, if you get happy God's again, grace. <laughs> and that happened, God's let, me, let me practice. And so he taught me how to play the bass on the floor that night, and I played for him for like 10 years. God's um, grace. That was your first time ever playing the bass? First time ever playing the bass. Good time. My God, have mercy. Yes, Talented. Yes, when did you start to harness it? When did you start to control it? When did you start to say, okay, now I'm doing it for the glory of God? Mm. Or have you been doing that all along? I think it was from the start. It was, it was always, I was always cognizant of, of that what I have is not me. It is more of God. Um, no way I could do it. I, I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't take the credit. I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to project. Everything I learned, God taught me, God and God used some men who were already doing it to teach me. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So what's that, once you, how long did you sing with Alabama Spiritual? Oh, man, from 12 till I was about 20, 21, 22. What was the next step after that? Did you I was with the Alabama Spirits. Did you go off on your own after that? I did. I was with the Alabama Spirits, and those are my uncles. All of those guys Uncle. are my uncles. Wonderful. Um, and then for about two years, I would fly back and forth to Cleveland every weekend to sing with Walter Barnes and the Men of Ministry. Uh, I did that for like two years. I came back home, got back with the Alabama Spirits, and I did that till I was good and grown. And um, we did a live recording in Montgomery, the Word Is He Project, and about. Um, Three, four months after that, I left my uncles and got with my cousins. Okay. And we started Sean Jones and the Believers. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, God man. is so good. How many songs have you recorded so far, thus far? Oh, man. I don't know. Did you write and arrange all the songs yourself? <laughs> many of them. Uh, on this, this latest project, so of course, depending, um, <coughs> um, God, that, many of them I wrote. We had some other producers. Um, of course, Reverend Johanna wrote Worthy Is He. Yeah. Um, um, the Sensational Saints from Cleveland wrote a song that I sing called Is God Satisfied With Me? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was just 
course, Mighty Clouds of Joy did that. Um, um, God, it's a song on the Alabama Spirituals Project. But but I had a whole lot of help. Okay, in writing the song. Uh, let's jump to that. Who are some of your favorite groups? Oh man, I think my all-time favorite is the Pilgrim Jubilees. Why? Um, everything about Clee and Clave uh, is, is the epitome of what a quartet singer should be. From their stance to their projection to their songs, to the way they walk around after the program or before the program. Everything about them is the epitome of what a quartet singer should It's amazing be. that you study all that. You know, Absolutely. Here, I'm not that familiar with. Of course, my father was a quartet sing yeah. wow. singer. Yeah. And let me, let me, oh, he was an undertaker also. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I want to tell you, one of my favorite songs is I'm Depending on You. Okay. But I learned about that song through my dad before he passed. When the song would come on, he would pat his feet or sing to the lyrics of the song. Wow. And I learned, oh, I like that song. Wow. It didn't really become meaningful to me until after he passed almost three years ago. You see, for almost 50 years of my life, I was depending on that person, yes. my dad, yes. all of my life. Yes. And when he was moved away, I said, Lord, what in the world am I going to do? Wow. So when I heard that song, my mother should tell me, they played, a pianist here played that song on my dad's funeral because he liked that song wow. and we loved it. And it didn't become significant to me until his passing. Wow. Now I say, okay, God, your song, your song. I never knew you, never knew the artist, but, but the lyrics yeah. held me yes. Yes. until God can show me, yeah. listen, I'm your resource. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm the one. So he says, never you to depend on man the way you did before. That's You're right. to depend. That's right. You are so young. How in the world did you, how did it come to you? Because you're so, to understand the lyrics. I wrote that song in the transition between the Alabama Spirituals and the Sean Jones and the Believers. Uh, there were some situations that happened in the meantime. And as we all go through stuff and people tell you, if you need me, just call me. And you actually believe that until you try to call them. Amen. And then when you call them, either they don't answer the phone or they don't do what they said they were going to do. And so I got to that place where, where I'm saying, God, if I've got to depend on anybody, if there's one person I can think that, that has never let me down, it, it was not my mother. She's a great mother, but there have been times she let me down. Mm -hmm. It was no family members. There was only one person that never let me down, and that was God. Mm -hmm. And so yes. that, that wrote the song. My mama told me. You know, he would always be there. Yes. She wouldn't, but Amazing. he would. That's it. That's yes. it. That's the song. Yes. Did you know that song would would affect so many people the way I it has? Did not. I did not. I did not. Yes. I did not. Including my own life. You wow. know, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much thank for, you for being me. here. And I'm sure you guys thank him as well. Do you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So let's let's talk about the ministry. Okay. You have been ministering through your songs for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when did preaching the word start for you? I did my first revival when I was 16. Mm -hmm. I actually, last week I was in Clio, Alabama, and uh, the, it was at a school, it was packed. I looked in the back of the school, and that was a guy that gave me my first revival, Melvin White. Okay. I was absolutely nobody. Nobody knew me. I was, I mean, I had nothing. I really didn't know nothing. Speak. I, I was just, and he gave me an opportunity to preach my first revival. And he treated me then as somebody would treat me now. I was nobody, but he treated me like somebody. He allowed me to that come and gave wonderful. me three nights. Yeah. And I preached for him three nights in, in uh, Clio. I stayed at his house in Dothan, and we drove back and forth. So at 16, I did my first revival. At 16? Yes, ma'am. So you're not just singing the word, you're preaching the word. I love it. Are, is that like, are you double committed to your ministry? Are you double committed to the word? of? Are you double committed to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love to sing. I love to sing, but preaching is my passion. Yeah. I never wanted to be known as the, 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 the singing preacher. <laughs> no, I, I never wanted to be known as the the, 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 the singer that can preach. Yeah. I want to be known as the preacher who can sing. Yes. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, if I never sing again, it's that word. Yes. That, that's Amen what I'm to that. Yeah. Amen. What's next for 
Pastor Strong Jones? We're, we're trying to do a uh, EP now. Our, our, our record released about seven months ago. And we're, we're going to release an EP with about six more songs on it that we didn't get on the regular album. Um, God blessed us in February to do the Stella Awards. We Amen. got nominated. Amen. Was, uh, Amen. 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 I'm sure there are more great things to come. This is only the beginning for yes, you. Um, do you want to tell us, share with us about some of the things that are going on with you right now, as of right now? I'm, right now I'm referring to the, I guess, the invitation for the doctor. Oh, yes. man, now I got okay. a letter. And uh, I never opened mail for real. Mm -hmm. I had a letter. Mm -hmm. The letter's been at the house for a few days. Mm -hmm. And just so happened last night, I was at my desk and I, I looked at this letter. It says from the president of St. Thomas Christian University. Hold it right there. I want you guys to listen to this. Go yeah. ahead and read the letter. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas Christian University. And so I opened it. And it says, um, Dear Reverend Sean Jones, St. Thomas Christian University from Jacksonville, Florida. We're extremely delighted to notify you that you have been recommended for an honorary doctorate Wait, of divinity. Wait, hold it right there. I want to make sure they get that. Yeah. Say that again for an honorary. Yeah. Honorary doctorate of divinity degree. Right. Good God. Yeah. Good God. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know you. I don't know to me. I have never gotten a doctorate degree, but yeah. I, I, I don't know what you have to do to get it. But let me tell you what's yes. so amazing about that. And I, I really, I really never really talk about it, but being just straight transparent, here, here is a guy. I went to Central High School from Rockford, Alabama. I, I, the population in our city may be 800. Okay. It's a super small. There is no stoplights in our city. There's no stores. It's one gas station. Okay. A little smaller than Phoenix City, huh? No, my God. Way smaller than okay. Phoenix City. Okay, here comes from a guy. When I got in about 11th grade, I dropped out of school. No. Dropped out of school. Not because I wasn't smart. Uh -huh. I just didn't want to do it. Most I, dropouts I are smart. Oh, God. And they still drop out. Mine. I met someone like it. that, so I understand. Just didn't want to do it. Uh, uh, my mother, I mean, I was a, I wasn't a bad kid, mm -hmm. but I was, I was a trip. You were a kid. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was a trip. Uh -huh. And uh, she, she pleaded with me, she said, stay in school. You only got one more year. No, no. I, I had met who is my wife now. Mm -hmm. um, she had an apartment, and so this is major to leave my mama's house where I gotta be at home at a certain time. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend has her own house. Uh -huh. I'm gonna move with my uh -huh. girlfriend. Uh -huh. okay. You know, it was a bad situation from every angle back then. And there were teachers who said, that Sean Jones, he'd never be nothing. Mm. Said, that, Come that, on. He, I remember okay. my oh, teachers, Lord. my English teacher would say, he'll never be nothing. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah. What man do? Oh God. And so, long story short, you come from, from the, the, the school system saying he'll never be nothing. He'll be a statistic. Either he'll be a drug dealer or, or he'll, he'll get killed. Um, from that, and, and years later, I did a revival. And again, the church was packed. And I looked out in the crowd, and I saw the same English teacher uh -huh. that said I would never be nothing. My God. Came my to God. my revival. My God. Can, can I just, can I just <laughs> intercept here for a moment? Yes. Because there may be some young guy yeah. who is where you were, uh -huh. thinking about giving up on life, quitting school. What would you say to them? I, I would the say to time. you, I would say to you, regardless to where you are now, just keep pressing. Life can be bad today, but that does not mean life is going to be bad tomorrow. Yeah. If you end it based on your today, you'll never see your tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that where you are is not where you're going to stay. Yes. I'm living proof. That no matter how bad it is now, your yeah. future looks better than your present. Yeah. Amen. Pushing. Amen. Amen. Now, now, I know there was one of the. You care to share a little bit more with us what's that? about what's going on in your life? Um, we set the the award program. Did we talk about that just yet? Award. What's going on? Uh, Sean and the Believers uh, nominee. The uh -huh. nomination you yeah. got. The nomination. For the Stella Award? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, tell us about that. That was amazing. That was a that was amazing. Uh, the Stella Awards have been, you know, that that's almost the biggest award you can get in quartet gospel. Yeah. Um, and we we got nominated. Our CD came out one month in a one month window mm -hmm. from the time you could even get nominated for it. So if our CD came out in October. If it wasn't out by November, you would have missed it. It came out just in enough time. 
And in that one month time, our people got behind it and pushed it, and we got nominated for the Stella. We were in with about 12 other groups, and uh, so it was a long shot that we would get in to Amen. the top four. Amen. You know, I was Amen. just glad to be nominated. You know what? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad you're doing this because I know that's going to be a time when we're not going to have this sort of access to yeah. you. So, so I'm glad that we're doing this right now. Um, again, would you care? I don't know if you're prepared for this, but but can you do something for us? I'm sure. Would you mind? What's that? you guys yes. giving us a little something, whatever you choose? Oh, no, it? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, wow, you put me on the spot. I know. I was intending oh. to. <laughs> I was intending to. Uh, However, the Lord leads you. Oh, God. I, I let me just tag on to what I was saying. Is is regardless of how rough it is now, regardless of yes. how tough it is now. The truth of the matter is, it won't always be like this. Okay. Um, that was a song by the, the whiners that says, Ain't no need of worrying what the night is going to bring. It'll be all over in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Morning, it will be all over. In the morning, weeping may endure for night. Joy will come in the morning. Amen. Just, just one other thing before we close. If someone is looking to get your music, get a hold of your songs, how could they do that, sir? We're also going to put something up on screen, but can you tell them how they can get your music? They can find Sean Jones and the Believers on Facebook. Uh, you can search for Carol Foster on Facebook. Um, you can search for Sean Jones on Facebook. Everything you need is on Facebook. Okay, okay. And your church location? The church location is 425 White Street, Auburn, Alabama. The area code, the zip code is 36830. And we have church every Sunday morning at 1015 Central Time. Pastor Jones, I can't thank you enough. But I am truly grateful that you stopped by to say something to us. Again, I don't know if we'll have this privilege because we know you're going to blow Absolutely up. Absolutely, we will. But we certainly do thank you for stopping by the Sabrina Sumbry Show. And I'd like to thank all of you guys for yeah. being here. I want to thank the viewers at home. I want to thank the innovator creator of this great show. As I always say, I pray you have sweet, sweet dreams of big life and peace of mind. See you next time. Now and then I tell it, Lord. Come on, help me sing. Say it, I am depending on you. Oh, Lord. Every now and then I tell him, Lord. Oh, I am depending on you. That's it. <laughs>